بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us from amongst those who become oblivious of the fact that the month of Ramadan moves very quickly and not to make us oblivious of the fact that before we know it, it's already a week gone by. We need to be from those who take stock of every day, of every hour in that day and every minute in that hour. And every second in each minute, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us very conscious of that. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, we all want guidance. We all ask for guidance. We all hope and pray for guidance. Every little while you hear us saying, May Allah grant us guidance. May Allah guide us. You, may Allah grant us guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us for guidance. The topic of guidance is an extremely important topic. We need to know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tackled this subject in the holy book, in the noble book, the Quran, in his own words. Firstly, we need to realize and understand that guidance is divided into two major categories. The first is to guide as in to show someone the way. That I can do and you can do. If someone says, can you guide me? If you know, you can tell them, look, go this way, do this way, or, or, or go that way, do this and do that. And you will be rightly guided. If someone is sick, the doctor can guide them. If someone needs some other form of assistance, a professional in that field can guide them, meaning can offer them showing them what they feel is the right path. So that is one form of guidance, ad-dalalatu wal-irshad, to show someone the road. The Prophet ﷺ was one of the biggest guides. He guided, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ You, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, guide the people to the right path. You guide them, you show them the right path. So that's the first type of guidance. The second type of guidance is whether or not now the person is going to follow that first guidance. Now that is known as the guidance of acceptance to adopt what was actually the other guidance. Let me try and word this a little bit differently. We have someone who shows you the road. Whether you follow the road or not is a different type of guidance. That is now known as hidayah of a different nature. I think I've, I've simplified it a little bit. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us guidance. So when we say Allah is the owner of guidance, we are talking of the second type of guidance. Whether or not we follow the Quran, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acceptance for us to follow it. But the Quran itself is definitely guidance. It's in front of us. In fact, in so many verses of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that revelation of the Quran as a guidance. Look at the opening verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In this book, indeed, there is guidance for those who are conscious of their Rabb. So there is definitely guidance in it. Whether or not we accept the guidance, that now is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it also depends on a few of our actions, whether or not Allah will guide us, and we will get to that inshallah further on in tonight's topic. Then if we take a look at the road or the path, the guidance of that path that I spoke about is divided into two. It is either a path that is connected to the dunya, meaning to this world, or a path that is connected to the akhirah, a path that is connected to the life after death, or to spirituality. So when it comes to this worldly path, even a non-Muslim could guide you as into, for example, coming to woodlands, you don't know the road. You stop, a non-Muslim can give you guidance. That's not talking of spiritual guidance. It's talking about guidance of something that person knows the road, it's connected to this world, they are showing you something. A business deal, sometimes a non-Muslim can guide you to a good deal. That is a type of guidance that even those who disbelieve, they could show you the path. But that is a worldly path. When it comes to the path of spirituality, 
Those who show the guidance are the, the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam. The Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the owner of guidance. So firstly, He will show us what is actually guidance. He sends the messengers to teach us this guidance. And thereafter, those who take from the knowledge of the messengers, known as the ulama or the knowledgeable, they then will guide us regarding this spirituality. And when it comes to that type of spirituality, we need to know where we are getting it from, that guidance. We need to know the source of our guidance, the source of our knowledge. Where are we picking it up from? Do we just surf the net and see whatever pleases us and we carry on? If that's the case, it's not the proper way of attaining guidance. Or do we go and look for it from the scholars who are reputable, whom we know, we know their background, we know exactly where they are coming from. We know that the criteria of their discussion of guidance is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet In that particular case, we will lend them an ear. Then in the Quran, it is important that we realize the term guidance has also been used for justice being served. Like in Surah Sad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Dawood alayhi salatu was salam when two people came to him or two parties came to him with a dispute. And they said, We want you to judge between us and we want you to judge fairly and to guide us to what is correct to the right path. So the guidance in this particular verse is referring to the justice that is served between two parties. That is also a form of guidance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives certain people. Now, this having been said, we as Muslims, when we speak of hidayah, generally the term is used to refer to what Allah is in total control of. We say, may Allah guide us. And this is why the dua is very, very important to make a dua, to say, Oh Allah, guide me. That is by far the most important dua that a Muslim can make. And I can prove this to you. It is the dua that we make the most. Whether we realize it or we don't is another thing. How many times do we read salah a day? Five times a day. How many rakaat do we read in every salah? Subhanallah, it differs from person to person depending on whether they want to read the sunnah and nafil as well. How many times do we read Surah Al-Fatiha in every rak'ah? We have to read it at least once. And in there, the first dua that is mentioned in the Quran, al-mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Now we need to become conscious of this dua. When we are making that dua, let's not just become entranced by the melody of Surah Al-Fatiha, but rather think of the meaning. We repeat it so many times. In 20 raka'at of taraweeh, we've repeated it 20 times. Have we realized what we are saying? The most important prayer we are making, O oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. The path of those whom you have favored, those whom you have gifted, those whom you have granted lots of goodness, and not the path of those who have earned your anger, nor the path of those who have gone astray. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never to lead us astray. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not lead astray. It is shaitan who leads astray. But man out of his weakness follows that path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that guidance is in Allah's hands. Allah alone owns guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will guide whomsoever he wishes. وَاللَّهُ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ That verse is repeated in many surahs, including in Surah Al-Baqarah. Then in Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how He is in control of guidance. He says, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Whomsoever Allah wants to guide, Allah opens their chest and opens their heart towards submission to Allah. This verse has a deep meaning. It means that guidance is connected to submission. If you submit to the will of your creator, knowing that it is, that it is his word, then indeed you will be rightly guided. So guidance is in following the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
In another verse, speaking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تهتدوا, And if you were to follow him, you would be rightly guided. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that guidance is in submission. It is in following Allah and following his messenger. So every one of us with that dua, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. And over and above that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on that straight path. And we need to check ourselves. How close or far are we from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word and from the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us always from amongst those who are following the right path. And wherever we've erred, may Allah grant us return to the right path as soon as possible. Ameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about another dua. Once you are guided, you don't just stop there. MashaAllah, we say it every day. May Allah guide us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ala Imran, Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana. O Allah, O Allah, do not misguide or do not let us be astray. Do not let our hearts lose the path after we have been guided. So sometimes what happens is we have guidance. But after some time, we become oblivious of it and we swerve. We swerve in order to avoid a pothole and suddenly the car rolls. That's what happens to our spirituality. We swerve because we have seen something haram and shaitan has entrapped us and we begin to roll. There is a spiritual rolling of the spiritual vehicle. It will require some time to rejuvenate and recuperate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that shaitan, he has his army also. And shaitan also calls towards what he terms guidance. But it is in the intellect of man to look into whether that is what Allah's command is or not. If when you hear something, it happens to be that which Allah has commanded, you must know it's correct. And if it happens to be that which Allah has prohibited, you should know it is incorrect. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the Quran in many places. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how shaitan has his army. And the army of shaitan also calls out and calls the people towards all forms of items which he calls guidance. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding shaitan, Lahu Subhanallah. Shaitan has calls his own companions or he has companions calling towards what he calls guidance. And he says, come, come towards this guidance. A person should automatically pick up that this is from the devil. It's not guidance. Qul in Say that indeed the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the correct guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah as well as in Surah Al-Ra'ad and in many other places that He gives everybody an opportunity. He gives them an opportunity for guidance. Nobody will die until and unless they have had opportunities to turn to the right path. Then on the day of Qiyamah, it will be held for them or against them, depending on whether they heard or did not, depending on whether they took heed or not. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He says from the very beginning in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَىٰ we will send everyone guidance. Whenever guidance comes to any of you, then those who follow it, there will be no reason for them to fear, nor to worry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they will have the goodness in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. And this is why in Surah Al-Ra'ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah 
Allah says, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are a warner. And we'd like you all to know that for every community, for every people, we have sent a guide. Every community, there's a guide who comes to them or who lives in their midst. And every nation, Allah sends a guide to them or a guide lives in their midst. It's up to us to find the guide, to follow the guide, to listen to the guidance. Then, because the ulama, because the scholars of this religion are not prophets, they are not flawless, they are not perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, gives us guidance and tells us, Give good news to those whom when they listen to a speech, they follow the best of it. Because human beings can err. I am standing in front of you. I might utter a word or two that might not be of the respect that the crowd is deserving or is deserving of. Or I might make an error. I might misquote very slightly a verse. And I expect people to stand up and get up and immediately correct me. Subhanallah. If that does happen, it is your duty. When the words of Allah are misquoted, it is the right of every Muslim to correct such a person, no matter what type of knowledge they have, because they are human beings. And this is the reason why in Salatul Taraweeh, though it is our duty to learn the verses as best as we can, when there is a mistake, it is the right of every person in the congregation to scream out what is correct if they are 100% sure that they know what is happening. Subhanallah. This Quran is not a book that is just for some and not for others. And it definitely has guidance in it. So therefore, when we are quoting it, we should quote it without an error. Whereas when it comes to the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. We should quote it as close as possible, as close as we can. If we make a small mistake for as long as the meaning is correct, inshallah, we will be forgiven. But when it comes to the Quran, there is no scope of making errors there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and may He guide us to the right path. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding those whom, when they listen to some speech, they follow the best of it. Imam Malik ibn Anas, Imam Udar al-Hijrah, who was sitting in Al-Madinatul Munawwara in front of the grave of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he pointed at the grave and he said, مَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وَيُؤْخَذُ مِنْ كَلَامِهِ وَيُرَدُّ إِلَّا صَاحِبَ هَذَا الْقَبْرِ He says, every single person, you need to take some of what they say and throw back some of what they say. Besides the one who is resting in this grave, you need to take absolutely everything he has said. Subhanallah. That means myself and yourselves, we cannot just listen to every statement that is being uttered without verifying it, without making sure that this is correct. If we are to follow absolutely everything of a certain man, for example, who's not a prophet, but a human like us, like myself and yourselves, we would be following his mistakes as well. You know, normally when people are reciting the Quran, Sometimes, and obviously it's good because we are asked to read in an Arabic tone and to read in an Arabic accent, that is the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says, read the Quran in an Arabic accent. How would you like it if I were to speak English in a non-English accent? In a typical Indian accent, so to speak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. When you speak a language, speak it exactly as it is meant to be spoken. If you were to speak Zulu, try to speak like those whose language it is. So when you read the Quran, try to read in the accent of the Arabs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, the most eloquent of people was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This Quran guides us to that which is good. We are meant to be reading it in the perfect way. And I normally say that when you have a person who does not read the news, for example, in the correct accent, and they put an accent on that absolutely confuses the people, what would happen? They would be fired in a short time, or nobody would want to listen to that news because they wouldn't even understand what is happening. The same applies when it comes to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is full of guidance. It is important that we read it in a perfect way. We try our best to read it in a manner that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
There was a point I was going to make, but sadly it has slipped my mind. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it comes back, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala nabina Muhammad wa ala ali nabina Muhammad wa barik wa sallam. Let's continue with this topic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He has sent all the messengers with guidance. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ We read that verse in tonight's verses as well. And it is repeated in the Quran in a few places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is He who sends the messengers with the deen, with the guidance. It is Allah who sends the messengers with guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can follow this guidance. Over and above that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that guidance is a gift from Allah. Guidance is a gift from Allah. We should treat it as a gift. When you have a gift, the first thing you do is you are thankful for it. So thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the gift of guidance. And this is why the people of Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quotes them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْ لَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ When they will be sitting in Jannah, they will say, Oh Allah, we thank you, we praise you every single way. All praise is due to you for having guided us to this. Had it not been for your guidance, we would never have been rightly guided. So we need to thank Allah. I'm sure you hear the words, Alhamdulillah, alladhi hadana lihada. Many times, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be praised in every single way. We praise Him for having guided us to this deen. Wallahi, there are others who don't even have a little bit of deen in them. And yet we are sitting here in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are not thankful, we might be from amongst those who are rejected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever do that to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important it is to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to consider it a gift, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ You want to know what is the big gift? The big gift is when Allah has guided you. Allah is the one who gives you the big gift when He has guided you to Iman. This is why we say, we declare, we confirm, we confess that the biggest gift we have is Iman, the belief in Allah, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That statement is by far the biggest gift that we have all been given. And that is the statement that will take us into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all paradise. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّنِي هَدَانِي رَبِّي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Another method of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to declare that Allah has guided me to the right path. I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of in Surah Al-An'am. And then Allah tells us whom He guides. Who does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide? The first point we need to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ankabut, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Those who try hard, those who struggle to come towards us, we will open the doors of guidance for them. So guidance cannot just come when we sit and we make a dua, Ya Allah, guide us. And then we are going to the nightclubs, we're going to the casinos, we're going everywhere, we want to uh, drink the bottles and what have you of alcohol. May Allah protect us. Then we make dua and we tell others, make dua that Allah guides me. And Allah guide me, Allah guide me. But you got a bottle in your hand, guidance won't come like that. Allah says, when you try, when you make an effort, I will definitely open the doors for you. So this is the role we play. We play the part, the effort. Make the effort, be genuine. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. That was in Surah Al-Ankabut. In Surah Al-Ra'ad, Allah says, وَيَهْدِي إِلَيْهِ مَنْ أَنَابَ Allah guides towards him those who turn towards him. Those who repent, those who are remorseful, those who have iman, Allah guides them. Those who give with their wealth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them. Those who soften up their hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them. Those who do good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them. Those who believe in the life after death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them. 
All these angles are made mention of in the Quran. Those who are thankful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them. Listen to what he says in Surah An-Nahl about Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Allah says, Shakiran li an'umih ijtabahu wa hadahu ila siratim mustaqeem. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was very thankful for the gifts Allah had bestowed upon him. So Allah says, so we chose him and we guided him to the straight path. So when we are thankful to Allah, we show gratitude. And what is the means of showing gratitude? Not only to say, I thank you, Allah, but live your life according to Allah's command. He's given you so much. Subhanallah. If you live your life according to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, automatically, that is thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who accept destiny when it comes in their way they will also be rightly guided there are certain verses in the quran where allah says those are the people who are definitely guided and one of these verses allah says in surah al-baqarah those whom when calamity overtakes them when they have a difficulty in their lives they make a dua saying oh Allah we belong to you and we are all going to return to you they are patient Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are the ones who are definitely rightly guided so we need to be content at all times. When something negative comes in our direction, we should take the opportunity to convert it into something positive. You've made an accident. May Allah protect us all. It's time to be patient, which is an act of worship that you won't be able to engage in unless something negative comes in your direction. When something negative comes in your direction that you feel as a human being is negative, say you've broken an arm. We ask Allah to grant us all inshallah good arms and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never to break our bones for us but at the same time if a bone is broken that is an opportunity to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the positive of it don't only look at the negative of it and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has given we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the best inshallah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about following our own desires and following our intellect when it goes against what Allah has decreed. Our brain obviously is one of the biggest gifts we have in terms of the body, parts of the body. The brain is one of the biggest gifts we have. We need to use that brain to put Allah's commands into practice, not to challenge them. So those who challenge the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dispute with them, Allah says in the Quran, we won't guide them because they are fighting with guidance. If you fight guidance, it goes further away. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there are some whom they read the Quran with a wrong intention, that itself will be a source of their misguidance. Now that is something dangerous because the Quran is full of guidance. How can someone be misguided through it? If they've got the wrong intention, they'll be misguided through it. Like a person who reads the abrogated verse of alcohol, for example. Oh, you who believe, and this is a verse that is abrogated. Oh, you who believe, when you come to salah, ensure that you are not in the state of intoxication. So someone reads the verse and intentionally they say, okay, so that means I can drink, no problem. I'll drink in the morning or I'll drink in the afternoon before Asr Salah and I'll delay my Asr a little bit. What are they doing? Or I'll drink in the night after Isha Salah. They are intentionally misconstruing and misinterpreting and playing a mischief with the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, Inna Allaha la yarfa'u bihaadha al-kitabi aqwaman wa yada'u bihi akhareen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift through this Quran certain people. He will lift them very high. Those who read it correctly, those who try and understand it, those who put it into practice, those who take it as a means of guidance and inspiration. Allah says we will lift them very high. And the same Quran will be a means of the destruction of some. 
those who know it but don't want to put it into practice those who don't want to know it and those who want to misconstrue its verses like the Jews and the Christians and the others Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this Quran that we revealed to them guidance but they changed it listen to what Allah says about the Bible Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding Isa alayhi salam Jesus may peace be upon him we gave him the Injil the gospel in it there is guidance and there is light but where is that gospel today nobody can come with the original manuscripts not a soul and the evidence of that is there is a huge dispute amongst the Christians themselves as to which is the correct version of the Bible so there are more than 36 different versions of the Bible in fact that was the last time we looked at it right now I believe there is a new version out so that makes it 37 or even 38 different versions and people are arguing and debating which is the original script we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us regarding the Torah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran we revealed the Torah we definitely revealed it in it there is guidance and light but subhanallah today again it has been changed it has been twisted it has been turned to suit others Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying never misinterpret the Quran because if you try and do that it will be a means of your destruction we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding remember one very important aspect we read the Quran it is our duty to read the Quran wherever a question comes to our minds let's not try and answer it ourselves ask those who know the revelation because there are reasons of revelation of most of the verses of the Quran at times we don't know them but the scholars of deen would know them so you don't just read a verse and start arriving at conclusions you don't derive and extract rulings yourself if you have not learnt you need to have learnt under the tutorship and guidance of a scholar who has also learnt under another scholar who has also learnt under another scholar until we get to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that is very important and this is the difference between the Muslimin and those who are not Muslims. When we get knowledge of religion, it must have a chain. It must have a chain of narrators, a chain of scholars. A chain of scholars that goes right back to the Prophet ﷺ. And that is when it will be regarded as authentic. And that is when what we will be holding is actual guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors for us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a very, very serious matter. He says in Surah Al-Zukhruf that sometimes people follow the mistakes of their parents and the mistakes of their forefathers and they stick to it even when guidance comes to them. When the true guidance comes to them, they use the excuse of, you know, our forefathers have been doing this for many decades and they continue doing it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the messengers and Allah speaks about these type of people in Surah Al-Zukhruf. بَلْ قَالُوا إِنَّا وَجَدْنَا آبَاءَنَا عَلَىٰ أُمَّهِ وَإِنَّا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Allah says, when you go and call them towards guidance, they will say that no, we found our forefathers doing this and we, we are guided by the path of our forefathers. So Allah asks a question immediately after that. أَوَلَوْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِأَهْدَىٰ مِمَّا وَجَدْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَكُمْ What if we came to you with something that has more guidance than what your fathers had? Would you then follow it? And Allah says, no, they've chosen not to follow it. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. This verse refers to us as well. Whenever we've seen a culture coming down through the generations, we need to ask ourselves, is it correct? If Islam allows it, if it is within the framework of the Sharia, Alhamdulillah, we may adopt it. But if it contradicts what Allah has said, we need to throw that culture out of the picture. Because many times, many people across the globe have spoiled Islam by adding culture to it. And what culture does, it pins you down to the ground. And it shackles you in the shackles of shaitan. And then... Religion becomes very difficult. You can't move left, you can't move right because of the flavor of culture, not because of religion itself. And this is why it's important to separate culture from religion wherever the culture is against the religion. We are not condemning culture. Culture is something very good. 
really, we need to be cultural, spiritual people. But at the same time, only the culture that does not contradict what, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us Muslims in every aspect and in every sense of the word before anything else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter speaks about the fact that in the month of Ramadan, it is a very big opportunity for people to turn. We know that. Guidance in the month of Ramadan. Everyone wants to be rightly guided. Everyone's heart is supposed to have softened up. We mentioned a few days ago, and a lot of people actually told me that it was a very interesting point. So let me repeat it. We mentioned a few days ago that when we have a computer, and we have, mashallah, printed a, a whole letter or prepared a whole PowerPoint presentation, and then suddenly we switch off without saving changes. What happens? We feel it, really. We feel we've wasted the whole afternoon. We've prepared so much and suddenly, when it came to save changes, we were oblivious. We either clicked no or the computer was switched off in a rush or there was a power cut. That's what happens to us every Ramadan. We change in Ramadan, we make a lot of effort, we read Quran, we do tilawa, we become better people. As Ramadan comes out, we forget to save our changes. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us from those. Really we need to be from amongst those who can become better people. So after Ramadan, we can benefit from what we did in the month of Ramadan. This is why Allah says, when He speaks about the verses of Ramadan in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah says He wants you to complete the course. He wants you to complete the entire course of 29 or 30 days. And He wants you to declare His greatness upon the fact that He has guided you. That is why on the day of Eid, what do we say? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Beautiful words. What is that? That is full, fulfilling the command of Allah that He has issued in Surah Al-Baqarah to say, declare the takbir, the greatness of Allah because He guided you. Subhanallah. So that is what we do. So we need to declare the greatness of Allah wherever He has guided us. Let's thank Him. Let's declare His greatness as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are some people whom guidance comes to them. They know it's guidance. They know it is guidance, but they fight it because it does not suit their whims and fancies. Allah says those type of people, they will go to hellfire if they continue in that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever wants to fight the messenger, whoever wants to fight the messenger when he comes with the truth and with guidance, and he wants to follow a path besides the path of the rest of the believers, he wants to follow a path besides the path of guidance after knowing what is the path of guidance, Allah says, we will do two things. The first is, Nuwallihi ma tawalla. What is meant by Nuwallihi ma tawalla? The Mufassireen say, Nuzayyinu lahu al-batil fayarahu haqqa. Wa nuqabbihu lahu al-haqq fayarahu batila. We will turn what is good in his mind so it will appear bad. So he will consider what is good, bad. And he will consider what is bad, good. So he will not be able to distinguish between right and wrong because when the guidance came to him, he fought it. May Allah protect us. And the second thing Allah says he will do is he will make sure that that person arrives in hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever do that to us. I normally give an example and it's something we need to think about. We as human beings cannot tolerate the flame of a candle on our baby finger. We cannot tolerate the flame of a candle on our baby finger. How then are we not shaken when we are being spoken to about hellfire 
that is 70,000 times hotter than the hottest flame that this dunya and this world can come up with. The lightest of flames of hellfire is more than that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. Then there is another issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when He guides, nobody can misguide. And when He has decided there will be no guidance for someone, nobody will be able to guide them. Subhanallah. Let's listen to the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whomsoever Allah has decided to misguide, there will be nobody who will be able to guide that person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. There is a hadith, Qudsi, hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking and he says, Ya ibadi, kullukum dallun illa man hadaytuhu fastahduni ahdikum. O oh my worshippers, all of you are astray besides the one whom I have guided or besides those whom I have guided. So seek guidance from me and I will guide you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And together with that, we need to make an effort, inshallah, to get towards the guidance. And this is why it's important we must make an effort to come for Salatul Jumu'ah early. We must come to listen to the guidance. It is termed as guidance in the Quran, a dhikr. It is a reminder for all of us. Sometimes what happens is we come so late for Jumu'ah Salah. We come when the Imam is almost complete and we rush and we are happy that we've caught the Jumu'ah. We've made it a ceremony. It is not a ceremony, it is a sermon and a lecture. We need to go and listen to that message. A lot of us are guilty of not having new Islamic knowledge in the week, every week for many weeks. Sometimes for a long time, if I were to ask you, how much new Islamic knowledge did you get last week? Maybe the month of Ramadan, you might have attended a talk or two. If we were speaking about outside the month of Ramadan, that is guidance. How, my, how many words of guidance have come into your ears in the last week? Is it only worth about the, the 10 minutes that we caught in Jumu'ah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. It's important we make an effort to go out, to attend the lessons where the Quran is being taught, where the Sunnah is being taught, where the books of Deen are being read, where there are people who have gathered in order, to, in order to spread the word of Islam, it's important we make an effort to try and attend these functions and these gatherings so that we can achieve guidance inshallah. If you notice that that gathering was a waste of time, you don't need to attend again. But you need to make an effort. You need to try. You need to go and see. And sometimes it might have been a little bit of a waste of time in the sense that people might have just spoken about everything that was not religious. But maybe you could streamline it and remind them to say, look, we are here for guidance. Let us speak about that which is constructive and let us try and improve ourselves. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah that every single one of us should be worried about ourselves. Because those who are misguided, they won't be able to affect me, they won't be able to affect you if myself and yourselves are rightly guided. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ مَنْ ضَلَّ إِذَا اهْتَدَيْتُمْ Allah says, O oh, you who believe, be concerned about yourselves. Be worried about yourselves. Those who are misguided, they won't be able to harm you or to misguide you if you yourselves are rightly guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from those who are misguided. Remember, it is prohibited to befriend a misguided person because the chances of that misguidance brushing off onto us are very great. Especially when we allow them into our homes to mix with our family members, their children and ours. If they are misguided people, what will happen? That misguidance will infiltrate into our homes. This is why it's important we select those whom we allow into our houses very, very carefully. They must be from amongst those who are conscious of the Creator. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from those who are conscious of Him at all times. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a certain issue. That there are some people who like to say, no, we've got guidance, they don't. We are more guided than those people. And you know, we would have been more guided. If we were to do this, we would have done it better because we are more rightly guided and so on. Don't brag about guidance because it is Allah alone who knows who is on the right path. Allahu Akbar. You try your best. Don't disrespect others. If they are not 
clean cut on what is completely forbidden, you need to realize they deserve a little bit of your respect at least. Not every time would you be on the right path. You might have certain deeds that are on the wrong path and they might have deeds more than yours that are on the right path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to remain on this highway known as as-siratul mustaqim, the right path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this issue where people start saying this one is rightly guided or we would, be, we would have been more rightly guided in Surah Al-An'am. Allah says, أَوْ تَقُولُوا لَوْ أَنَّا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا الْكِتَابُ لَكُنَّا أَهْدَى مِنْهُمْ The kuffar of Mecca, they used to say, if this book was revealed to us, we would have been even more guided than them. We would have done a better job than them. The question is, if you are going that far, can't you believe in the book? So foolish they are. So they did not believe in the book solely because it was not revealed to their kith and kin, to their cronies. Because of that, they said, no, we don't want to take it from this man. He was an orphan. He grew up. He's poor. He doesn't really have enough wealth to compete with us. We don't want to listen to his message. But if it was revealed to us, we would have done a better job. We would have spread it across the globe. Now look at them. Look at how misguidance was written for them. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even the messenger does not guide. He does not own guidance. Now, one might think that this contradicts with what I said at the beginning, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa innaka la tahdi. You, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you guide to the right path. And then in another verse, Allah says, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you don't own any guidance. Now, what is this? You find the non-Muslims pick up these two verses and they show the, the unsuspecting Muslims and they say, look, there's a contradiction in your book. And people say, oh, is it? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. There can never be a contradiction in the Quran. I told you there are different types of guidance. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can show the right path, but he cannot decide who's going to accept it and who's not going to accept it. So his uncle Abu Talib was shown the right path. He knew the right path. He confirmed that, yes, I know it's the right path, but he refused to accept it even on his deathbed. And the Prophet ﷺ was very saddened because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, imagine, had informed him that you have the ability to guide, to show them the light because you have the light. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses calming him and telling him, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ Indeed, you will not decide who will accept the guidance and who will not. It is Allah who decides who will accept the guidance and who will not. And it is Allah who knows really who has accepted the guidance and who hasn't. So this goes to show that nobody controls guidance besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They might be able to show you the path of guidance, but they won't be able to make you walk on it unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to walk on it. May Allah make us all walk upon this correct path. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us thereafter that when it comes to guidance, it is our duty to convey. Any goodness we have, we need to convey it. Any form of guidance you have, you need to teach it to others. When someone asks you a religious question of guidance, it is compulsory for you to respond if you know the answer. And if you feel that they have no ulterior motives. But if you feel they have ulterior motives or you are not too sure of the answer, then obviously you should not answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala issues a warning to people who want to hide the verses of Allah when they are asked about them. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ Those who want to hide what we have revealed in terms of the verses and guidance, after we have revealed it in the book, they want to still hide it, they don't want to convey it, they don't want to teach it, they don't want to tell the people about it. Allah says, those people, Allah will curse them and all those who can curse will curse them. The curses will also curse them. Which means those who were affected by that negativity will also curse them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can teach. 
This is why it's important when we go home, we must always speak to our family members about what has happened in the masjid and about the guidance. Musa alayhi salam, he looked at the light that was also called Huda. He told his family, let me go and see if I can get any guidance. We've lost the road, we've lost the path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, he went back to his family with the guidance. He promised his family, I will come back to you with guidance. Meaning, I'll show you the path. When I come back, I'll tell you what happened. Amazing. How many of us are ready to go home and spend at least 20-30 minutes with our families telling them what happened? And telling them on a Friday, today we had a 10 minute talk. I remember three points from the talk, one, two, and three. We only seem to be remembering those points where the Imam has said, your wives need to listen to you. Your wives must be under your command. Then we'll go home and say, you know what the Imam said? I've recorded it on my mobile phone. Listen. <laughs> then we are guilty of being selective when it comes to issuing the knowledge that Allah has given us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. What about the verses where Allah says, don't swear, don't shout and scream, don't be disrespectful to your family members and so on. We forget those very fast and we forget them very, very quickly. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. Then Allah tells us that whoever has chosen the path of guidance shall only be choosing it for themselves. It will help themselves. Whosoever has decided to go on this right path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they will be guided for themselves. They will be benefiting themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are certain people who go out and guide others. For them, they are the blessings of Allah. Allah says,